Welcome back to Sao Paulo. We're just two days ago, Loud shot down the reverse sweep attempt. Today, they find themselves trying to complete it. And they are now just one map away from doing so. Mimi, they've taken us the distance. That they have. What a fantastic rally from Loud. And for the side of Fnatic, they were asked a question in this map. We've seen what they can do. We know that they are a good team on Lotus. We had no expectation of what would be brought out by the side of Loud. And for Fnatic, they failed to adapt. They failed to find the solution to that game plan. And now they're headed the full distance. And the reverse sweep is very possible. Two hours ago, Fnatic was looking at the flawless tournament run to end this. And it looked so good. It looked like it was a damn near possibility when we went to split. It looked like a surefire thing. Now, <laughs> now, they're looking like they might be the first team to get reverse swept in history. That would go back to the original narrative about this team a little bit, though, would it not? But yeah, I mean, the very identity they've been yes, trying to shake exactly, this tournament. Exactly. They still have an out, though. They just need to be able to rebound from this Lotus loss. They elect to go there. They fall flat on it. Loud able to look very strong on both sides of that map. Follow once again. It's Les leading the charge here for this Loud squad on map number four. Yeah, and honestly, he was the engine to this reverse sweep getting started, right? He was the guy on split who brought rounds like this back into it. Then on Lotus as well, he continued that same momentum forward. And I honestly think a major reason why Loud is still in this game is him alone. Absolutely it is. And if you think back to Champions 2022, it was Les who helped get this team over the line to help them win their first championship and here again when they're up against the wall he is performing to a level that is absolutely incredible and keeping them in this series his lurks on the attacking side were excellent the way that he was anchoring on the defense was perfect and for Fnatic they were really struggling in that map it, it felt like consistently on that attacking side they were letting that clock run down they were kind of folding a little bit under the pressure and then running into these strong setups and getting mowed down by loud it just feels like everything for less is just firing at all cylinders. His decision making, his crosshair placement, his reaction times, everything is incredibly on point for him right now. And Fnatic need to find a way to shut this guy down if they want to walk away victorious and hold that trophy. So Les, the consistent top performer for Loud, but we had also put some onus on Sodok to pick it up here in this map on Lotus, and he did exactly that. He picks up our HyperX Reflex moment for the day. In the grand final highlight, it belongs to him and him only. Yeah, I think the, the casters, Brennan and Josh, were talking about it really well. This guy was asked a monumental question. Can he bounce back from the week two maps that he started off? The first two maps, very weak for him, especially Fracture where he was asked to play the raise, and then Split. He starts going back a little bit, the mind games start going. He looks like he has answers to Boaster. And then on Lotus, he looks like a completely new man. He's back yeah. to the normal roles, and he's calling like a beast. Yeah, that he is. Sidok, he managed to answer that question, but now that same onus is being put onto Boaster, heading into map number five. He was the guy in charge. He was making the perfect calls in the first two maps, and now he's struggled to find that solution. And here on Icebox, which is where we're headed next, a map that used to be Fnatic's absolute bread and butter, there is that big question. Is it enough? Will Boaster be able to come up with a plan to win this series? And I, I have to continue to bring back up Icebox for Fnatic against 100 Thieves, yeah. right? It was a amazingly solid start. And then it fumbled, and then it looked like 100 Thieves was gonna bring back the entire map. And they had a miracle round to save it, but there was still the question, is there actually going to be Fnatic succumbing to the pressure? And I think right now, with this pressure of the reverse sweep happening, uh, Icebox, the decider, I think, again, both teams should feel confident on the map. It's more a question of the confidence they're feeling in the moment because it's the pressure moment. It's the biggest stage you've played on. We're heading into our prime gaming agent, Select, Achilleos. This is it. All cards on the table here. You're making your final run. You're bringing out those strategies. If you got something special, this is the time to show it. I mean, there's so much pressure on both of these teams right now. For the side of Loud, you've got being able to pull off that reverse sweep for the first time here in front of the home crowd, getting that back to back trophy for Fnatic. It's about not losing out in this series when you had such a strong, consistent start, not falling back into the trap of just being able to drop these series and not being able to win championships. There's pressure on both sides. They go back to the composition that I think kind of defined this team in 2022. This was their best map then. They played fantastically on this map of Icebox. 
And now here, with a new roster, with the same expectation of winning a tournament, they have to prevent these reverse sweep, or Loud is about to make history. Yeah, this one's really interesting. I think, yes, they started to lose that lead against 100 Thieves, but what we saw in that was a lot of strategy. It was a lot of attempts from Boaster, from many from the team, to work on the executes that they had, and it was a lot of new stuff. Not just what was happening in that old composition that maybe you're referencing. So I think there's still a lot left in the tank, but they have to find a way to siphon it out. History will be made here today, either way. This is it, the grand final, map five. The winner brings their region an extra spot at Masters Tokyo in June. Let's send it back to our casters. Here's Bren and Sideshow. What a way this series has gone backwards and forwards. It's been on a nice edge at times, but ultimately history will be made here today. Yeah, and this crowd has got every penny of what they paid for. I mean, an absurd match so far that can only end in an absurd outcome. It really doesn't matter which way this map goes. Like the desk was talking about, something historic is bound to occur. You either get the back-to-back -back winners in front of the home crowd, pulling off the first reverse sweep in VCT history. All you get, Fnatic defying the choking narrative, hoisting their trophy, and Chronicle becoming the most decorated player that we have in the game. And so here we go. Icebox is the staging ground. And it will be one final fight between both of these teams. You couldn't find a better map for it. You really couldn't. Both of these teams have such great ideas here. Home ground for Fnatic, but it's been loud that impressed me the most. The decisions I mean, made. Pushing all the way deep, they're going to take Snowman control. And a kill found for them. We're both falling. None of that Viper utility is going to be useful or used. How do Fnatic respond? Rival, oh my goodness, Sheriff shots ringing. No kills claimed, Dart. Late to be broken, but it is that pivot, and a wedge is being driven, is up to Sadak. What a containment, and what a kill to claim. Lau taking the pistol. And what a time to get a flawless pistol as well. Lau have been able to answer back with some of these in, towards the end of the series. At one point, only one out of five pistol rounds won. But they look absolutely immaculate there. And that's a demonstration of why I think their attack rounds have looked so clean. The way they use the Harbour and the Viper adds so many different layers into this. Sometimes they flash through the Viper wall. Sometimes they take deep control on the site. Many different layers. Surely Dirk get out of that. I mean, they're, they're just going for something aggressive early, but Durka is not going to get away with it. Not a single misstep. Lada hoping to have a clean closeout, but Boaster has something to say about it. Running and gunning, moving his way forward, still alive in a fight, and doing significant damage. Flash play into the back, though, and it's corralled him. Loud of all the control. All the weapons. <laughs> Fnatic mentally have got to hold on in this series. Playing into the crowd is not that difficult at the start, when things are even or when you're winning. There's some satisfaction the players get out of silencing them. But at this point, when you in your own mind know you're letting the series slip, the crowd's response just serves to heighten that. It's not an external pressure, it's the amplification of that internal pressure that everyone on Fnatic already feels. That nervousness. And this round has to be a big one. Fnatic, there to prove that they can stand and go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not crumble under those expectations and that pressure. This is the one to win, Turka. That's oh, a wide wasted. swing. Really wide, and he doesn't give up his space. He's looking for information because the turret went down. Less already finding value in the Killjoy head-to-head, -head, winning a bit of the info game, forcing the drone to come out from Leo and pulling people away from A. Can Sadak find the timing to pull the trigger here? Trailblazer held. Kawazin. 
moves forwards. Sage a bit of a gap in the play, but ahead taken clean off. Durka holding that high ground position now, a bit of maneuvering. Great dart, pushes them back once more. What? And you've got to be kidding me! An overheat in the moment, but still maybe Chronicle can salvage it. There was a flash play to set that one up, but running out of ammunition, running out of bullets, it matters not. Three in the round, two years to remain. And what a round from Chronicle that is. The play from Durka set up with his swing. And then Chronicle claims another. Already though, I think you're witnessing the level of confidence and swagger that Durka is going to bring. He considers this map his playground. And as the time ticks down on two E's, Fnatic claim their first. And getting that round on the board, so damn important. Persuade those narratives. Broad Natic, Choke Natic, whatever you want to call them, whatever you want to label. This team, getting that one on the board is going to do a lot for the mental. It definitely is. Look at this play though, using the distraction of Durkin to be able to collect one, and then that spray wow. control is immaculate. Immaculate from Chronicle. Everybody else on Fnatic is hunting for their first trophy. Chronicle looks hungrier than <laughs> almost everybody going for the second. If Fnatic can do it, if they can deny the reverse sweep, they can claim that title. It's Chronicle who's making the history books. It's him that's going to be the first player to lift two titles. Durka left on his own. A little bit of a flash bay. Durka is going to find it very difficult to get aggressive in the early round because of this cascade. Always, always going to be up in his face. We saw Buzz struggle with it too. But Durka not so easily dissuaded. And when he open, my goodness. Shot connects, but that's an instant reply. Insane confidence though, isn't it? Loud need to look to punish him early so that Durka starts to play a little more passive. With Kawanzin falling, the threat of a flash through the smoke, flash, a flash through the Viper wall, is not there over towards B. But the pivot called by Sarak, everyone returns to him over on the A side. Presence shown, Util dropped down. Now they're making it more than aware that they are scaling into it. Aspas is so far away from this hit. Yeah. All the way back on B. He's going to be that last final piece of the puzzle. But a spike denied, there's no time left. Good 12 Bam. seconds. Spike in their hands, and it is Aspas who has to do the most. And he does. Distraction in the play. And the pieces get picked up. The round gets salvaged with the spike down. It's a post blind. Chronicle move forwards. Can't quite take the fight and win it. Alfie has still got a chance here. Sadak and Les are very weak. Does the lockdown get invested? It yes, does. it does. Huge investment from Sadak. Alfier, he's got off, sticking, nothing afforded, no time, half under the fuse, you've got to be kidding! What is that? What an absurd round. Ha. How Aspas got that much value on the flank, I'll never know. And how on earth does Alpha yeah, get that and bring things down to milliseconds, the difference? That's how close that was. Hair's breath away. I'm but you got it. 2 2. You got to put full focus forwards. Dirk is looking for an early fight again. He's got a hero rifle in the round. Fnatic normally are unassailable on their defense side. Sometimes their attacks don't look as solid, but defense side of Icebox, they are usually immaculate. And so far already getting tested. Everything to play for. Fiber Orb stopping the approach, no one watching top nest. No kills on either side, but the Cove gets brought down and Durka, he finds one. Great opener. Dash disengage, Asmas tries to play his life here. The weaponry is not ideal. Util now to try and buy some time. A bit of spam as well. Chronicle was aiming to get two. But Durka, Boaster, running guns. 
It's pure, pure chaos. RNG in a moment. And what can be done from there? Sturka with three. Another tap, though. It's on a nice edge. So tenuous. War broken. Players falling. And Asmus, he has to back away. He cannot afford to fight it. He knows he's lost the battle. What an absurdly... <laughs> I mean, back-to-back -back rounds that are just bonkers. Sturka is a maniac. He's an animal. How is he getting three kills in that round? He was, How? He was the only player with a big rifle in the round. I mean, Leo had a bulldog as well, but the opener is ludicrous. The kill on Sadak is pretty clean too. And he's just peeking with all the rest of Fnatic as they swarm. You see how fast they were on the retake there? As soon as the spike got planted, Sadak didn't even have enough time to throw his nano swarms before Chronicle was trying to defuse. Disrespect showcased. All the way through into B main. No one from Fnatic gonna be meeting this one, but they've got the util. It's so deep from oh Sadak. My. Push all the way up, knives. Surely positioning's known, Sadak. Does this get cleared? It has to, surely. Leo, half clearance, off angle. And he's doing enough damage, he's buying enough time. Reckoning, that's gonna assist. Plant will fall. Will this go down? Dart in the back. Great to supplement, Durka. This guy's unleashed. Nothing to tether him back. Dash, still active. And he wants to make the most of it. Rez gonna be committed, brings it back up. Player advantage for them. A dodge, a skip around, wall up in their faces in the cloud burst. It's getting dangerous and it's getting more than that. Looking like the round win. Every time you feel like one of these teams should have the advantage based on the economy or the early picks that they're generating, can turn in a moment. Les once again proving his stability on this roster. He has stepped up along with Aspas. Aspas has been so quiet in this series and now bringing it to Durka. It's Durka putting out that challenge. The title of the King of Icebox. He wants to hold it down. And of course, Loud happy to contend, happy to bring the fight to them. Poster, close angle here, held with the Viper's Pit. Might be looking to use it. Kawanzin taps the plant, waiting for a reaction. Bates in Alpha, yeah, and they punish. Updraft, dash, Turk against nothing. It was a great idea, but he just can't land the shots. And in the meantime, Les has taken everything from them. He's pickpocketed the them from A. The back of the side, Turka. One more blade in his hands. How does he contain? Fires wide. And the call is made already. Spike steadily making his way now over towards A. Alarm bar close, broken. And Turka spams. Where does the weaponry hold? How do they win this? High ground angle, Aspas. He sees everything. And you can smell the Fnatic crumble happening in this first quarter of Icebox. And for these fans in the arena, they are fully, fully feeling it for loud. It's the, it's the manner in which these peaks are happening. Rushed from Fnatic, opening up space on the other side of the map. Louder one step ahead, the pressure being applied. The individual ability too. And this point in the series, no more questioning of Loud's resilience, of their grit, determination to take it all the way. They want to carve out their spot. They want to be that back-to-back -back team to take a title. And so far, it feels like map five in Loud DRX, where Loud were able to summon something extra, another gear when their team needed it the most. And they put the pressure on their opponents who crumbled. Fnatic are taking a timeout as Mini tries to reinforce the squad. Boaster speaking words of confidence to the rest of the team too. 
they have been within a fingertips distance of this trophy all day. To see it snatched from their hands on Icebox of all maps, where Fnatic are definitely the greatest team of all time on this map. There is no one else that comes close. This is Fnatic's playground. Durka's playground. And so far, they're getting destroyed. By Taken, that's confidence. The kind of response you need, but Zanuck, Oh, not willing to let it go for free. And it's a great trade. It's immediate with the Seekers, spamming it down. Durka getting so much done, but maybe overstays himself. That welcome, no longer. Look how much value they're getting out of the high tide. It becomes impossible for players at Snowman to swing and help. Durka tries to make a play, but he's completely on his own. There is no one there that can help. This harbor is getting so much value. And a regroup. 3v3, rifles in the hands of everyone. Could come down to just singular moments. Glimpse in time to turn the tide. Louder not afraid to call a rotate sometimes in rounds like this. Oh my god, Fnatic Boaster. is going for an info push. Boaster, wow, what a way to shut that down. Kill found, still no one's watching the angle of Sadak. The IGL with the most to do. Dipped in the end and a doubled up position. Fnatic, it's calm. It enters their camp off the back of the timeout. Massive improvement from Fnatic in terms of how they dealt with that. The three players didn't rush things. They still allowed Durka to do Durka stuff at the beginning of the round. But when things got tense, they grouped up together and went for a coordinated play, re-pushing towards yellow, catching Loud off guard and creating an advantage for themselves where the pressure was on Loud to plant. There are so many ults in play here. Lockdown for both sides, Viper's Pit, Natural counters to each other, you could argue. There's no way. What is he spotting? He's Straight just prodding them. Oh my goodness. And this is an ankle watch for Durka. Where are you looking, son? What's going on? Out in the open. He's trapped. It's amazing that he didn't end up falling. Chronicle's got his back, though. Util there, back against the wall. Durka somehow comes up with the kill. How would the Fnatic go two and two there? Leo, Hunter's Fury rips its way through. Aspas and Les. Fnatic have answered back. We will not go down easily. Not into that distance, night, And we will not let this opportunity slip away from us. Viper's pit, though. Less. Does oh. Alpha yet really have time to invest his ult here? I don't think so. Okay, they go for it anyway. The lockdown. But surely you can't wait another six seconds before you even start getting into the pit. Try and clear this. Pressure. On them, lockdown destroyed, counter spam, is it there? No! And the pit remains up, Post the falls, Lurk plays, Leo moves forwards, but he just doesn't have the right angle. Less than Aspas pulling this one back from the brink. Can you expect anything less? Rookies turn veterans. All of these crucial rounds are going the way of Loud. Amazing play. So stable from them. The way that they navigate that pit, get the spam on the lockdown. And so many dangerous situations where Fnatic, you know, maybe even get away with too much, and Loud still come out on top. I think the massive difference maker so far, though, not that he's closing the rounds out, but Aspas is really delivering. He has been so quiet in this series so far. And it, all it takes is one player to step up, and suddenly, massive shift. Imagine the kind of performance that Durka loves to put on in a regular basis. 14 to 4. And as long as Aspas and Durka are having a similar performance each, the rest of Loud looks like Look they've got it. Force into the angle by Durka. Shots going stray. Lovely bit of util though, Leo. I'm gonna claim that one. That was a shot dart straight at the feet of Les. 
think it hit him in the eye. Yeah. Even as the fight goes, they still don't have the weapons, so Fnatic are going to be struggling. To make the most of this one, what's the call to be made? Loud. They push fours, they push deep. Cope used. Locks up one of the angles, one of the avenues, and Boaster, uh, or I should say Chronicle, almost going down, Dark going wide, maybe that panic again, settling in. An extension to the round, though, as time goes their way. Fnatic, though, danger. returning fire. Major danger here. The pistols lighting these players up. Reckoning has to be pulled out, has to be used to contain, has to be used to shut down, and it's all slam dunk. Loud 7-3 up. Getting huge value out of the harbor pick. This new innovation in the meta. And on the maps where they've won, I'm thinking back to Split, where they're playing almost a revamped version of Fnatic's composition. Perhaps here it's the same. Loud have had a great read on the meta this entire tournament. Their compositional picks, the harbor usage, the sky from Kawanzin, it's all fired them forwards to this spot, this moment. Less on the lurk up tube as the rest of the players put pressure towards A. Malik left wondering, where do we find that advantage? Where do we find that edge? And it's certainly not here. Asmus moves forwards, but a denial. Looks like of the plan, there was a spike being used. Durka has to respect it, dash back. But Asmus is causing chaos, carnage. Right in the back line, Les was trying to lurk up, and well, dealt with. But Aspas, oh my goodness! Down to Alpha, yeah. It's scrappy, it's all over the place. But it's all in Loud's favor. Eighth round came. Fnatic dominated the first two maps. Loud looked like they were completely out. But this battle back has been supreme. And they are now in commanding control of the fifth and final map, the decider in the grand finals. Fnatic have had so many heartbreaking moments over the course of this team's history with Boaster and Durka together. For them to lose this, it might shatter them. A risk by Durka. A swing up in their faces, but he's met with a lockdown. Respect has to be shown. Still, he overstays it. Gets the one before eventually traded. Cove, a safe plant and an ult online. Kawazin has the Seekers, and it's time to let them loose. Corralling, finding their targets, pushing forwards. Kawazin, nothing left unsaid, nothing left untold. Just a collapse. Inexorable is the feeling. Loud with a 9-3 lead. I have never seen an attack side like this on Icebox. Loud are reinventing the map. It's gorgeous to watch. They are in control writing their own destinies with both eyes firmly on that trophy in center stage. What a difference. Loud, this commanding lead, crowd all on their side. Let's send it down to the desk to break it all down. Thank you so much, friend. Loud have brought this series back from the brink of defeat to a 9-3 scoreline. First half, Icebox Mimi, it's all but one. It is truly incredible what Loud has been able to achieve here. In front of their home crowd, they have made a run back that no one else has been able to do. And for Fnatic, under that pressure, we were waiting. Will Fnatic choke? Will they have that moment where they crumble? And under Loud's pressure, it's happening. This is such a potentially legendary moment for Brazil, for esports, for Valorant here that we're witnessing.
And I think it comes down to Aspas really having a game. He's come alive in this final map, in this final attempt to take the trophy here. And against Durka too. This has been a head-to-head -head that we've been waiting for the entire series. It finally comes alive, and honestly, Dirk is having a couple of fumbles. Fnatic entirely are having a couple of fumbles, and Aspas is thriving in it. I mean, some of the decision-making that we're seeing right now from Fnatic, from Dirk in particular, have just been baffling, to be honest. They don't have somebody that can flash him in to really help escort him and get these aggressive picks, to, you know, to be pushing through these smokes, pushing through these walls, but he's trying to go for it anyway, and oftentimes he's getting punished. I mean, look at that push out on, you know, by Yellow. He doesn't have any updrafts, he's walled in, and then you just get picked apart one by one. Right now, the fundamentals are falling apart for Fnatic, and they need to gather the pieces together and glue them back together one by one during this halftime. But for Loud, what a moment this is. They look down and out, 2-0 in the series. Split could have maybe gone a different way, but they come back, they rally back. Now they're on Icebox, 9-3, one of their opponent's strongest maps and they might just be able to make this reverse sweep happen in front of their home crowd. And for Fnatic, this is potential tragedy. This arena right now is a pressure cooker and Loud are thriving in it. We're heading into the second half. History will be made. Bren, Sideshow, take it away. History looks firmly on the side of Loud and a tragic tale is being weaved. This Fnatic, so close yet so far, been 643 days since they had that last chance in a grand final to lift the trophy. They've been to five global lands since then. 68 matches. Oh. And this has been their best chance. Durka and Boaster's lifelong quest. It does seem to be ending in that poetic tragedy. Everything is in favor of Loud to pull off our first B05 reverse sweep in VCT history. To think that no one's pulled it off in almost two years of international play. Less overwhelmed though, as Boaster responds. That creates that 4v4. It's up to Fnatic not to drop the ball now. Spike gonna be planted, down over the top, relieving it. Still, Sadak, lucky to escape. Snake bite at his feet, Kawazin with the heel. Still a wall in their face. And two years coming through. Cascade breaks it up, flash play, Boaster fully blind and with every shot rattle, it feels like the nail in the coffin. Kills found, bodies fall. Elfier and Leo, they've been amazing, they've been immaculate, but this might just be too much. Aspas, three in the round, sticking the spike, pistol is theirs. The difference of the feel of this series, from opening to close, there could not be a bigger contrast. Loud look on fire, Aspas 21 and 5. Lesson Sadak right there as well. But Aspas and Sadak have woken up. They've remembered why they're here. And what they need to do for their team. Fnatic are forced to force. They must invest into this one. Seven round deficit. They need a miracle. They can feel it. Kind of pressure. The most players will only experience maybe once in their life. And if you start doubting yourself, it can self spiral. It'll spiral into a self fulfilling prophecy here. And it may be too late for Fnatic. Loud are applying the pressure. And a full rotation. Happy to commit the bodies to it. Spectre bullets going wild, going wide. Kawazin, an opener with Boaster falling. It's a scramble, a mad dash to make the most of the round, but they are being collapsed. They are being swarmed. And Loud in control of their own destinies. The second iteration of this Brazilian super team is on track to be just as good as the first. For this core of Aspas Les and Sadak, I said it before, I'll say it again, they've only ever lost to two squads. 
and it does not look like Fnatic are going to join that elite group. Loud have only lost four series ever, all time in the history of this team. 34 and four, looking to make it 35 and four. Three grand finals in the last 12 months. And the slight shake of the head from Boaster says everything you could possibly need to know. The roar of the crowd, the reverberations and echoes and vibrations, they take a heavy toll, even amongst the best in the world. This Fnatic Super Team is definitely going to have other chances. But Lockin was looking primed to be theirs. And in a manner that we have never seen before, at the global VCT events. On the eve of the 2023 season, Loud look to have ripped it from their hands. Possibly paved their way brick by brick to the start of a dynasty. What a way to begin 2023. Claiming accolade after accolade. And with every player that falls, it just feels so damn difficult for Fnatic. A flash play, less getting confident, has to be punished, he gets out alive! He's gonna receive the heal as well, Cowan Zine taking a bit of damage for it. War forwards close, fight taken, trades are there! Alfie Air, so much to do, reset of the Spectre! Down to that 2v2, can Fnatic survive? Pop flash is good, Kawazin low. Taking a fight out in the open, this is unconventional. Usually, I'd be talking about how, you know, the newer players like Kawazin to the team need to be slowing down in those moments and not allowing the weight and the gravitas of everything to get to them, but with the eight round lead that they have, I think they can throw that one away. Aspas with a Guardian. And 7,000 Brazilian people behind him. Spike planted, extends the round out, adds a couple of stray seconds. Fast up draft play, triggers the alarm bot, doesn't know where the players are. It's that crossfire, looking to clear as much as possible. Dash fade, still high ground, taken. He's given a hop across and just guesses incorrectly. So, it's Fnatic that survive. If they are going to pull off the impossible, it has to be one round at a time. Usually, we would ask the question, right, Brent? At what point do we start to believe in the comeback? But I think the more important question really here is, at what point do Fnatic start to believe in any form of comeback? There's such an uphill battle for them to get back in the game. And when you look at them down on the stage, such a battle for them to get back into it mentally as well, I think. Loud are gonna go for this buy. A Spectre on Cowan's and everybody else with rifles in hand. Dart will push him away from that forward approach. Going on, Fnatic. We're gonna claim some space for the entirety of their team group. Dart! Unless winning out a fight, once more, taking it straight to Alpha here. Wall in their faces, time to think, time to brood. The emphasis is gonna be on Fnatic, Wall beginning to be broken. Plant push back now to Seekers, it's every single element included into this game plan. Up top, Angles watched for, Chronicle, stand up, wider swing, Leo's good. Half on the health, but still can't claim the kill. Down to that two on two. The spike still not planted. Same players left alive for Loud. One falling, Turka. Disengages, spike in his clutches, and everything to play for. 
Zerka's going to be able to get a free plant, and the question is where he repositions to. He's got his pick of the litter. He's never quite had a task like this ahead of him, Josh. No. It's been a long time since Dirk has been outplayed like this as well. Normally dominates the Jet matchup. Asbas, 21 kills to his name. Looking to make it 22. Looking to put it on map point. Looking to put it on series point. Damage done though, Turka. That's good. Biding his time. Asbas, a bit of spam will do it. Trying to reset the aim. Wide swing. Flick of the wrist. Turka shuts it down. Huge round for Durka to win. Another lifeline tossed to Fnatic. And Durka needs to be doing so much for this team if they have a hope. Because the team play is showing cracks. The mental is showing cracks. Fnatic still have a six round deficit to make up. Loud take a timeout, push down to the eco. They have six more attempts to be able to get a tournament point on the line. I'm not ready. I use here, Josh. I'm not ready for a comeback, Brent. <laughs> I'm not ready. I don't think my voice is either, but I'll do my best. 11 to 5, such a massive lead. Timeout maybe just being used to cool down. Hard work getting a bit panicked there, forcing into it, just trying to end it early. Going for a lot of those early fights, yeah. yeah. And I think also possibly over rotating. Stacking four players onto the A site, and then Aspas also joins, leaving that rotate back through for Durka late. Though at that point, it's a 1v1. It's not like you can really cover the map. Four players down here towards B. I've seen so many potential comebacks ruined by a gamble on a thrifty. And it could happen here. Loud move forward, steadily, slowly. But a rifle spam. It's Fnatic looking to try and contain it. Lovely. Alpha, yeah. Making the most of this one and the coverage. Every single angle watched for, spammed. Any sort of threat of this getting out of hand looks like it's basically done and dusted. Less. He's he's short to find, but he is being squeezed. And yeah, he's, he's low enough that slight breeze will put an end to that. Sadak with a kill or a death is going to be able to get his ult online. And Loud taking the timeout, probably for mental reasons, like you said, Brent, just to keep themselves collected. But if it was for strategic reasons, it's going to be looking forwards here towards round 18. There's major ults to play with here. And Fnatic are normally going to build an attack side strategy that revolves around them. A lockdown push, maybe a deep Hunter's Fury onto the site. Either way, honestly, A or B. That's the style of Boaster's calling. He tends to build around the tools he has at his disposal. Can Sadak come up with an answer? We saw him pushed in the match against NRG and he came out on top, but my God, did he give it everything. Aspas caught on to the tricks of the trade. He knew Durka was playing for that updraft play. No bullets exchanged, no blades really being fired. Close drawn, broken. And I think one no part of B main. Be evacuating. And at this point, I'm wondering whether Les is going to reactively use his ultimate on A. Because currently, Louder in full control of the B side. High tide goes down. Boaster doing a similar kind of lurk as we saw from Les in the previous half. Goes up, removes the turret. And here it is a reaction. They know it's heading towards A. Alfier looking like he wants to use this lockdown. Clear that space out. That's in a deep position. No threat of any util, any ultimates to clear this one but out. Boaster watching the flank. Watching for it, and he needs to get out alive. He needs to 
He's caused that extra level of threat, but right now he is being squeezed. And also less detained. Attempt of the punish inside the pit. Will we see it happen? It's a war being fought on multiple fronts. And water falling into the back of the side. It's loud, looking to reclaim that space. Tap on the spike. Hiding their position, though, planted up into that top angle. Fnatic performing surgery with the way that they are executing these players. It's precise in nature. Beautifully orchestrated. They have not given Loud any opportunity here. Boaster getting great value watching the flank. And then Alpha, yeah, tucking himself underneath, using the lockdown that he had invested to get into such a great spot. I asked the question earlier, Brent, at what point do Fnatic start to believe in the comeback? I think if they win the next round, the next rifle round, that is, I could definitely see it happening. Confidence getting back up, Alpha Year. Trying to keep the spirits high. There's only a four round deficit right now. Already Fnatic have clawed their way back. And as long as they can dodge this thrifty, the next rifle round could be everything. Push to the limits. Aspas has been such a demon, and he's got the blade storm. What damage can he do? Sadak in the tube. Doubled up position, Fnatic. Looking to not give away any errors. Anything at all that will shift and turn that tiny, tiny buffer that they've got to work with against them. Diligent there. Snake bite, shock dart, used to clear the close cubby. High tide, though, threatens a reposition. Fnatic are taking quite a while dealing with B. They still haven't cleared yellow. And nobody's taking space on the opposite sides in response to this. They've met resistance. On top of the tube, though, looks like Durka setting up for it. Dash forwards. It's going to be that pincer. Another level to it, making sure that he attracts the attention. And all eyes are on him. Got to deal with this guy currently. Sergeant Juking waiting around these players, but as the util gets used, it's just giving Turka a target rich environment. Everyone crumbling, everyone falling. And that short ass pass dropped down to 10 health. Disengages, dashes away, but the reactions are all in the hands of Turka, not to be outdone. We talked about that jet dip, we talked about Aspas having the map of his career. Seems like Turka was not happy with all the attention. The, the way that Fnatic are using mid is showing why they're considered the best team in the world on this map. The greatest team that we've seen on Icebox. The flanks on flanks that they've got, the way that they're prodding and backstabbing, it's all been excellent. And I can tell you, there is a ripple of doubt, a ripple of unease circulating in this arena. It all comes down to round 20, I think, as to whether or not Fnatic's comeback will become a reality. And a big investment. Operator. For Aspas to hold this angle. Team gonna be holding his back, making sure that he doesn't get pressured from that left approach in B main. And a Fnatic gonna be diligent enough with the jump peak. Making sure that every single corner is cleared. They have to win this round to try and make the most of it. Barely a hair, barely a head, but the shot misses and goes wide, Aspas. Not to be deterred, will still push and take that angle, still holding it, but it's a fast rotation. The call is made. They don't actually have any space over towards A. Alfie has been playing very passively, just controlling if there was a push. So they have to go and take this space. Leo has kept his drone alive, though. They're going to be able to put pressure on. What a timing for that lockdown. And the lurk. It's Here's stopped in its corner. tracks. Boaster not getting away with murder, not this time. And Fnatic forced into a corner. This is tough, the time pressure. It feels like Lotus all over again. 25 seconds. Wall's not going to be broken, so it should be that plan. Now starting to come through, reckoning. Hunter's Fury, everything at their disposal, and Turka pushes forwards, making the most of it. Pandemonium that strikes back, close position, flank. Kawazin might be earning that kill, but Durka is doing so much, goes down. Oh my goodness! Down to the 2v3. 
Cove in play, gives him a bit of covering fire, but that's going to get spammed down to his half on it. A dodge and skip, Alfie, yeah, making sure to adjust the angles. And it's Fnatic who close in. A steady improvement round after round. That's six in a row right now. Pulling the gap close, forcing Loud onto another eco, and the game is on. The comeback's afoot. Look at that play. Gorgeous space found by Durka as he picks up two before falling to the snake bite. I'm free to say. And slip ups here. Loud cannot hold on their defense. The denial on the plant, despite the fact there was 25 seconds left, did not come through. Did not matter. Wall burnt early. Sorry, drone burnt early, I should say. And that was a tool that Leo had late into the round for the prior. But I think not out of that danger zone just yet, but... Oh my God, are they making a decent effort of it? They were and looking I dejected in the timeout. And I think at this point, the players will truly believe. They've crossed that pivotal threshold where now you can see the horizon and it all becomes doable again. You've battled through the darkest times. And now just a hair's breath away. Both teams going to be keeping an eye on center stage with that trophy, the title, to try and lay claim to it. Both teams giving it all they've got. It's a great high tide there from Tui's. You can see how much time he's put into this agent. Got some really solid ideas. Could this one get sticky? Does Loud have enough players around here stacking five on that even with bad weaponry, they could cause problems? Pushing forwards. It's a deeper play. Wall across. But still the fight. It rips through with bullets landing. Boaster, he has to plant. In the middle of all of this, he does. Extend the play, extend the round, but he gets his team in a much more winnable scenario. 4v3. There's always the safety of the pit if he chooses to invest it, but he would love to save that for round 22. Durka in a really precarious spot. As the walls fade away, Loud now make it even. Three on three, Viper's pit dropped down. Off to the side, Leo! Right into the smoke. Blessed by RNG, it's divine intervention, and it might just come down to it or not. Fnatic. One round will stand between them. Pulling off the impossible. It's an expensive one, though. The fact that Boaster felt pressured enough to have to invest the Viper's Pit takes away a pretty crucial win condition for them in the next pivotal rifle round. We talked earlier about how important some of these eco swing rounds were, but now it feels like Loud are in their last chance. This map has been a mirrored microcosm of the series overall. Loud in absolute commanding form in the first half. Never a doubt that they were going to be able to win this. And Fnatic have clawed it back. In these players' careers, you're never quite going to be tested like this. It's a rarity. Pushed to the limit. Map five in a best of five. Everything to play for. Aspas spoke earlier in the interview, saying that he wanted to set an example, wanted to become a legend. For all of these players, that opportunity is now. One big play, one clutch. One crucial entry could be all it takes. All the way here, round 22. The Jet battle that head-to-head, -head. Durka. He's not willing to give up that title. Look at the stack from Sadak here. The call to put four players on A early. And then pivots away, puts an alarm bot in mid, looking to limit Boaster on his lurk. But everything about this round makes it look like a clash in A. Now Fnatic move back. Have they somehow sensed the stack on the A site, despite everything being quiet on the Held. eastern front? Breaths, drone to clear, respect shown, Aspas has to do that. 
No, from Bosta, it's merely a feint back to B. This battle is going to be fought on A. And Loud, by virtue of either some crazy read or sheer luck, have got their players in the right position to fend it off. This could be it for the tournament, for the title, for the trophy. Flash for info. Shot dart to clear. Lockdown, close. No tools in the back pocket of Loud to try and break this one. Players have to respect it. Let's walk back away here. Nana Swarms. Playing the inevitable as the plant will start to go down now, but still, something's got them in a tizzy. Can't quite get the spike down. Chronicle now starting to stick it because time is running low. 12 seconds. Wall breaking. Now making the most of it tonight. It's less. Comes down to it. Him and Asmus. What can they do? Time running so damn low. But just enough milliseconds. And, and all put into it. All put into the hands of Aspas. Leo with a falling phantom shot as well. But Aspas with the world on his shoulders. The mantle and responsibility. Can he turn the tide of this? Turret clear doesn't know the positioning. So much to do. So much to watch for. Durka leaves his feet hanging. An easy target. But time running low, and Fnatic know all they have to do is wait. All they have to do is buy that extra time. And as the spike ticks down, Alfayet, comfortable in his mind, comfortable in the presence, knowing that they have drawn even. One of the greatest comebacks that I have seen on Icebox. Fnatic normally dominate their defense side. Loud barreled them over, but Fnatic's Ability to work the map, run these backstabs, and set up post plans for each other has been immaculate. And also, little moments like that don't hurt whatsoever, do they? Louder now forced to take an eco and play for overtime. What an insane shift in this series. Fnatic are in the driver's seat. Thought it wasn't possible, yet here we are. Fnatic silencing the doubters, silencing the naysayers, but it's not over yet. Couple more hurdles left. You know that Fnatic are going to be raring for it. Their story is one of tragic moments over and over again. The last two years, players like Bosta hunting for that trophy, coming so close to the first ever LAN event that we held in Valorant. And now we can taste it. The stack is set up. Sadak finds the first, and there is no lurk play. No return back. That was Zine. If they go for this pivot, Cowan Zine oversteps himself. Wide angle gets out with his life. And gets all the information, but Boaster knows that, and they're going to go for a re-hit on B. He's anticipating these rotates to have moved, and Loud have. They've relinquished a little bit of that pressure. Trailblazer sees nothing on A, though, and these players return to B. Wolf Force, though, was it come properly? Reset him through. Rifles carries them forwards, but it doesn't win them around, not just yet. Two on two. Aspas and Kawanzin again for the third time in this map to try and convert a 2v2. Tags him. Aspas low. Nana Swarm almost taking him out, but 10 seconds ticking down. The spike will be planted. An extension once more. Updraft. Asmas hunting for information, hunting for a glimpse, a glimmer. Anything to make this doable. A tap on the spike, Asmas! Jet Force, it's all down to Alpha yet. Noise everywhere, the double swing! Spray down! Unbelievable! And a groan of absolute disbelief from everybody in the building. As Alfie pulls off an absurd 1v2 to take his team to the very brink. This round should not have been close, though. Loud on an eco. And Loud have one shot, one chance at stopping the magic like that. Look what it means to these guys. Durka telling the crowd to shut up. You can feel it. It's palpable. It's in the air. Fnatic 
taking destiny into their own hands, wrestling it away from Loud. Tepid is the approach on belt. Leo just backs away, taking a bit of a tickle of damage. Loud with so much to play for. This round deciding so much to decide whether they're capable. Bringing it all the way if they've earned the right to get that back-to-back -back title. Fnatic looking to stop them. Attack side, dash active from Turkey. This guy has been a maniac. Psychotic at times with the way he's been playing. The confidence in this moment. It's the same kind of round, actually. The loud run against them. Boaster's positioning. Surely this is too late. Surely it is. Everything on less. Alamba spotted. Right down the middle. Less is lined up and set up, yet still Chronicle lands the shot. Sadak stunned, and he's still no one watches. Spike to the side, loud and doing it. Fnatic respond though, 10 seconds on the clock. And do they have time? Can Spike off to the side, picks it up. There's a gap in the play. And with the wall down, he gets the plant. Can't be denied, breaks a portion. And still it's down to boast of the IGL. Can he do it? All up to him, all down to this. And it's not going to be the case. Boaster giving his shot to earn that trophy there with a 1v2. And Loud used the advantage that they had generated to pull themselves to overtime. Truly, could it have ended any other way? Stretch to the distance. Crowd on their feet. A lifeline has been purchased as we head into OT. Loud looked absolutely impeccable on their attack side. That's where we're going to start things. Durka pushed away by the cascade early. Fnatic had tried to generate early picks all throughout their defense half. None of them really worked. High tide used though, and it's not an aggressive one. Does not purchase very much space on site. So Fnatic already offered a bit more space on the defense than they had in those first 12 rounds. To Gavarin. Less is to be the backstab down mid. But the rest allowed. Make sure that they can creep and crawl and right into the line of sight. Turka will not let that go unpunished. Big flash play through and it's a Galata roll. Durka runs Icebox. If you want to win this trophy, you've got to go through him. What a difference this round. An absolute shutdown, surely. No Aspas way. cannot be allowed to do this one. 25, 25 health. health. Dashes to the side, revealed. Positioning known, Spike out of reach. Moving forwards, you tell out, but a shot dart does it. A one-for-one -one trade that Leo will be perfectly happy with. Oh my god. Fnatic get their second tournament point. Last time they made it to a grand finals, they were nowhere near any tournament points. A 0 3 loss to Sentinels, a Masters 2 Reykjavik all the way back. The dawn of time, essentially, in Valorant history. Well, here they are, they stand once more on the precipice, on the brink. One round. It's all it'll take, it stands between Fnatic and lifting that trophy. Long time coming for a lot of the players on this EMEA super team. And with that singular round, it'll be Chronicle who makes history. The first player to claim two titles. And Loud look to deny, look to scrap. Scrape, push their way into the limits of OT.
It's another well-timed cascade, actually, and Sadak's called a good rotation. In terms of getting the defenders in the right spot, Sadak has been doing his job as the IGL on defense. But they actually can't stop these backstab plays from coming through. And the post plants, that's where the nightmare has been had for Loud. Grouping up. A fight is inevitable. And so are Fnatic. Dash forwards to the side, slow warp, supplements. Durka able to take this fight, but it's a little bit labored, a little bit strained. Dart lining them up, re-swing, swings down, spray down! And everyone falling, everyone collapsing. It's deafening, a gloom enters the arena. As Fnatic, they can feel it. Inexorable, inevitable, however you want to call it. With one player left to go, Fnatic have essentially got this one all tied up. One round away, and the fight is over. 14 12, denying the reverse sweep. Fnatic, they pull off the impossible. What insane mental resilience from this squad to be able to battle back. Deny the trophy in front of the home crowd. And as Boaster said earlier, a trophy was taken by Loud on Turkish soil, and so Alpha will respond. Boaster and Durka complete their long, winding journey towards a trophy. And Chronicle becomes the first player in the history of Valorant to have two titles. What a squad, what a story, and what limits they were pushed to. 32 teams whittled down to just these two, and Loud He sent home. Respectable effort, Fnatic, they had to work for it. I think that might be an understatement. Loud had so many chances, and they will, they will be Horribly disappointed that they let a lead, 11-3 was it, slip through their fingers. Absurd situation. An unreal comeback from Fnatic. But we will see Loud return. Perhaps not in Brazil. But this squad has certainly got more to give in the future. The winners today though much deserved. It's been 643 days since that lost to Sentinels. 68 matches, their fifth global LAN. And finally, Boaster and Durka can put their hands on a trophy. Overwhelming emotions, not just in the crowd as they were denied that trophy, but Fnatic, the pride, they lift that trophy high above their heads. The goal that they set out for, for so long, Durka Boaster, it's finally theirs, obtained. And all of that working out at the gym, finally paying off. Magnificent. And I'm sure it tastes just as sweet the second time for Chronicle. What an insane addition those two new players have been. Leo and Chronicle have added so much to this squad. For both of these teams, I was not expecting them to be at this spot. With only a couple of months of practice heading into lock-in, both teams looked so refined. The ideas, the teamwork, the individual talent there in droves. Truly pushed to the absolute limit. As he said once before, we'll say it again, Chronicle defining history, defining that moment for him. The only player to ever lift two trophies. And what a player to do it. Last year was a disaster for him. He lost out by two milliseconds to Fnatic and failed to make land. 
left as a free agent in the offseason too. A player that at one point, at the end of 2021, had an argument for best player in the world. I don't know, I don't know who the MVP of this tournament ends up being from the Fnatic side. I think Les had an insane game. Leo started out, the first two maps were completely dominated. And it was just incredible. I've never seen a man possess more than Durka. Took matters into his own hands, destiny. It was right for the taking for a team like Loud, but Durka, oh man, not to be outdone. And I think too, you have to give such credit to Boaster for finally overcoming those demons. You saw on his face the, the heartbreak and the feeling of inevitability that he had let another opportunity slip him by. You could see that written on his face during the timeout. And look at what they were able to achieve. His attack side calling was sublime. Sure, there were some moments where the clock ended up being his worst nightmare. But in general, that attack side was a masterclass. Imie granted that additional spot at Masters Tokyo. Well, Fnatic to cheer for for that. The energy, look at that. The watch party, got to be getting late. <laughs> and remember that this is only the beginning. This isn't really, truly part of the partnership league system that Valorant set up. This is a one-off spectacle. An unbelievable single elimination tournament from which Fnatic emerged victorious. Not undefeated, though it looked like that in terms of their maps. But my God, they come out on top and set up for a wonderful series of stories to follow over the course of 2023. Yeah, I mean, the future is so bright for Valorant. It really is. If this is the stepping stone, my God, what does 2023 have in store for us? <laughs> if we're treated to this as the beginning here of a long, hopefully quite cool circuit. Yeah, yeah. I am so looking forward to seeing Tokyo and champs. I think this tournament has given us all of the tastes, the new super teams from Brazil, from Fnatic. It's been so good. Yeah, well, enough about us as well. I'm sure you're sick of hearing it. Let's send it down to the floor to hear directly from the winners. Salve, salve, Mirapuera! Olha onde eu tô. Tô aqui no palco ao lado dos nossos campeões. Mas antes da gente trocar aquela palavrinha com eles, eu quero apresentar meus dois convidados que têm um recadinho muito legal pra você. Primeiro a Ana, que é, exec é, é produtora executiva do Valorant, e o Léo, que é chefe global de esportes do Valorant também. Hello, everyone. I'm here on the stage alongside with the champions from Fnatic. But before we talk to them, I want to introduce two special guests. Anna, executive producer at Riot Games from Valorant, and Leo, the global head of esports for Valorant 2. They have a quick message to share with you guys. Hey everybody, I really just wanted to say what an amazing day of Valorant. What an amazing month of lock-in. I want to thank the entire Brazilian community for being such amazing hosts. The energy in here today was incredible. You've treated all of our rioters and all of our teams so great. So great, in fact, we're thinking of coming back. We're already making plans, so more on that soon. Aí, então primeiro ela gostaria de agradecer, né, todo mundo que recebeu aí, né, é, esse lock-in, foi um evento maravilhoso, agradeceu toda a comunidade brasileira e toda a comunidade de Valorant no mundo e deu um spoiler, falou que foi tão legal que vai voltar, então temos aí uma esperança de ter mais eventos internacionais aqui. Léo, seu recado. Hello, everyone. So, uh, lock-in was all about celebrating the new era of the VCT, it was all about bringing 32 teams from around the world to come here for a big fest. But right now, it's about one team. The one team that made no mistake. The one team that defeated the best teams in the world, including the 2022 world champion. It's all about you on behalf of all of us at Riot Games. Congratulations on your championship. And if you don't mind, I'll switch to Portuguese. Pessoal, o Loquim foi sobre celebrar a próxima era do VCT. Foi sobre trazer os melhores 32 times do mundo inteiro para competir aqui no Brasil em uma festa incrível, mas agora a gente vai reconhecer o time campeão, o time que não fez feio, o time que ganhou dos melhores times do mundo, inclusive do campeão em 2022. Então, é, um grande parabéns de todos nós da Riot Games para a Fnatic. Congratulations on the championship. É isso. Muito obrigado. Thank you so much, Ana. Thank you so much, Léo. 
eles vão cumprimentar agora os nossos campeões e agora sim a gente vai trocar uma palavrinha com eles. Stay here, Alfer. I'm coming. Ah, ok. Eles vão só cumprimentar aí e aí a gente vai trocar aquela palavrinha com os nossos campeões. Ele foi abraçar o Bolster. Tá, então, now we can talk with you guys. Oh my God, what is an, an amazing series. I believe you guys must be exhausted. <laughs> Alfer, last year Brazil took the trophy in Turkey. What? Last year Brazil took the trophy in, in Turkey. Now you got the trophy here. Yes. Is your revenge done? <laughs> yes. I, I take my revenge from Brazil. Like, I'm so happy because we win with this team. We won all the time win with this team. Like, viewers didn't support us, but thank you for everyone, guys. Because we are here because of for you. É, é isso, galera. Ele, ele, ele falou que sim, teve a revanche dele, né? É, mas agradeceu bastante o time da Feneric e agradeceu todo o público que, mesmo não torcendo para eles, é por vocês e é por vocês que eles estão aqui também. Now I want to talk with you, Dirk. Man, how did you guys manage to come back from a two map losses in a row and then an 11-3 in Icebox? What happened? Uh, I think it's because Icebox is one of my favorite maps and our favorite maps. And then when we got that uh, bad defense half, I said to the boys, like, yo, we got this. If these guys got nine, we can get 10. And then we proceeded to come back, uh, got to the overtimes, and then finished the job. But I think everyone did super well. Uh, everyone's amazing today, even though uh, it was hard, but I think it was super good for us. Thank you. Congratulations again. Bom, eu perguntei para ele, né, como eles conseguiram voltar de uma série de que eles tinham perdido dois mapas na sequência, depois de um 11 a 3, ele falou que a Icebox é o mapa preferido dele, e ele falou, pessoal, se a gente fizer 9, a gente pode fazer 10, e ele conseguiu realmente, foram atrás, ele quer agradecer o time, todo mundo que jogou bem. Uf, que emoção pro lado do time da Fnatic. Now with you, Chronicle. Man, you're... I missed you in 2022, in the international stage. Now you're back, you're playing super well. How does it feel to come back and to lift and make history, to lift your second trophy? I mean, it's definitely unbelievable feelings. I can say that we put, as a team, a lot of work to be here on the stage uh, holding the trophy. And uh, I can say that even though I didn't perform in this Grand Finals very well, uh, for me, it's important that my light, my team, uh, will stay alive and I will be their shadow. And also, I want to dedicate this victory to my wife Angelina, or Angelina. She is celebrating her celebrating her uh, her birthday today. And uh, as I said before to her, I wish her all the best, and uh, I hope we will meet uh, soon again. É isso, tá? Então, perguntei pra ele, né, que eu falei que senti falta dele no palco internacional de 2022, é, que foi bom ver ele jogando de volta aqui, ele falou um pouco sobre esse sentimento, falou que ele não jogou tão bem, né, no dia de hoje, ele não achou que ele jogou tão bem nessa grande final e ele quis dedicar essa vitória pra esposa dele, Angelina, que tá fazendo aniversário também, né, então, muito bacana a dedicação do Chronicle. Leo, now is your time. Man, for me, you are the MVP of the tournament. You played really, really well. You're... Now in this final, what, what the hell? Man, I want to talk to you about, do you, did you ever imagine to be in the top of the world so early in your career? Uh, early in my career? Uh, been competing for three years. <laughs> uh, but I guess uh, I've been ready to compete in uh, the international stage, I think, for a couple of years. And I'm glad uh, I get the opportunity with this team. Uh, we have full confidence playing with each other. Uh, it's a great start and I mean, We're gonna enjoy this victory tonight and then uh, we're gonna go for the next one. Oh, tá aí, então eu perguntei pra ele né, como é que foi chegar no topo aí né, do mundo, né? Tão cedo também. Ele falou que já compete há três anos, né? Que não achou tão cedo assim, mas tá dedicando a vitória pra todo mundo. Falou que hoje vai comemorar e depois amanhã já pensar no próximo jogo. Bolster. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Man. The crowd. You have been a fanatic since the beginning. Mm. You keep trying to get that trophy, yep. and now you finally got the international trophy. What does this moment represent to you, man? <laughs> uh, well, just uh, half an hour ago, we were 11 2 down or something, <laughs> and I was thinking, oh no, I'm gonna go second again. But um, my teammates are really good, and we, we somehow <laughs> pulled rounds out of the back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I don't know why I'm crying. Little baby. No, I'm fine. Yeah, we, uh, it was just a really, uh, good series. Uh, yeah, love Valorant, mate. <laughs> I'm gonna get grey hair in, like, one year, I think. Uh, yeah. Aí então o Bolser chorou bastante, né? Falou que há 30 minutos atrás estava com aquele sentimento de ia perder de novo, né? Mas eles conseguiram virar. E ainda brincou falando que ia ficar com cabelo cinza aí né? após esse jogo, antes não for ficar careca. Mini, now we have to talk with you. You have been fanatic so long as well. How did you manage to pull up this new team to come here to lose only two maps and do this amazing tournament? And what can we expect from you and from Fnatic in the rest of 2023? I mean. I have no idea how we went on the run we went on. Um, I mean, scrims went well, but that was kind of ridiculous. Um, so I did get a bit nervous in that, in that game. Um, some grey hairs, like usual. We got a meme in Fnatic that we do it for the viewership, so I think that was a, a five month <laughs> yeah. viewership game. Uh, for the rest of the year, um, this is the first one, and we're going for the second one and the third one. É, tem que ser muito. É isso, aí eu perguntei pra ele, né, como é que foi chegar aqui, perder só dois mapas e ter um campeonato praticamente perfeito. É, ele falou que não esperava, né, que os screens não estavam indo tão bem assim, mas eles acabaram indo muito bem. E sobre o resto do ano de 2023, ele falou que a ideia é ir um após o outro e conseguir mais títulos ainda pra Fnatic. Can I just say one more thing? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm more composed now. Um, I'd like to thank everyone in the audience today. Uh, even though, like, we're the villains, uh, I really appreciate everyone cheering and like I don't know shouting and stuff that was really hype it was a really memorable experience for me when we are 11-2 down and I'm looking at the audience everyone up there I was like honestly it feels like an anime or something and then I'd like to thank everyone at home who supported us and our journey and I'd like to thank my family uh, for watching my games even though I'm giving them anxiety and I'd like to thank Yinsu for all the support as well uh, much love and yeah thank you everyone Tá aí, ele agradeceu a torcida, né? Ele falou que quando estava 11 a 2 lá, que ele via a galera vibrando e parecia uma cena de anime também, né? E conseguiu agradecer todo mundo, agradeceu a Inso, agradeceu todo o pessoal e a torcida brasileira, principalmente. Alfred, você quer falar em turquês? Uma vez. Eu gostaria de agradecer os nossos assistentes que estão em casa e podem estar com nós hoje. Uh, Asok and Anders, so thank you very much for the support. And all the people behind us that aren't on camera, uh, team manager Colin, uh, performance coach Ewan, and substitute Kamek. Ele agradeceu toda o staff né, do time da Fnatic, todos os coaches, toda a galera que trabalha por trás do time aí para fazer o time dar certo. Tá muito legal aí o agradecimento do Mini. You wanna say uh, Turkish? Can I talk Turkish? Yeah, I cannot translate, but yeah. yeah okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, arkadaşlar, ilk önce hepinize merhaba. Uh, şimdi şöyle söylemek istiyorum. Ben buraya depremden geldim bir depremde de olarak. Benim depremden gelmeme rağmen beni e, momentum olarak güçlü tutan, hype tutan aileme çok teşekkür ederim. Ve arkadaşlarıma çok teşekkür ederim. Bu süreçte benim çok yanımda oldular. Onlar olmasa büyük bir ihtimal ben bugün hiç oynayamazdım genel olarak. Teşekkür ediyorum onlara. Buradan da izleyicilere teşekkür ediyorum. Então é isso, pessoal do Ibira. Barulho mais uma vez para os seus campeões. Once again, make some noise from Fnatic. Thank you so much, guys. Congratulations on your win. I hope to see you guys in more events. It was nearly two years in the making, but Fnatic, they make the most of their second chance in a grand final. Five full maps, overtime in the decider but they can rightfully call themselves champions. I, it felt like this series was two years in the making. It went on <laughs> and on and on and on. I, I aged two years, yeah. definitely, <laughs> during the for course sure. of that series, without a doubt. And I mean, what an incredible moment for Fnatic. It looked like they were going to fall into the same storylines that we've seen before. Choke Fraud Fraudnatic, they get to the final hurdle, they trip over it, but it didn't happen. The, the most insane comeback that I think we've ever seen in a single map in the VCT, in map five, after almost being reverse swept. It, it's unbelievable. I mean, at this point, Calm Clutch Natic, call him come back now, because that was insane. And I think it led to the best series all time in Valorant history, in my opinion. I agree. Easily. I think right, oh, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, you definitely put it right up there. And it's, it's definitely within the top two. Rewriting their own narrative, one yep. series at a time. Here they take the first one. You already heard Minnie talking about the second and the <laughs> third. But while he's talking about the second and the third, let's recognize the first player to ever achieve two titles in Chronicle. He gets it done. I mean, the stage has been set for this to happen ever since Loud made it in. We knew that we were going to be guaranteed 
a repeat champion. Chronicle overtook that FPX core and Na'Vi, shut them down, and then shuts down to the loud core as well. So our first player now to get two trophies under his belt. And it has been more than a year in the making. 2022, this guy did not make a single appearance at an international event in Valorant. It felt like he fell off. It felt like he wasn't going to be that able to come short. back and do it again. He was short. good as an individual, <laughs> but he wasn't making way. it here. Follow will take this slander. <laughs> Still, I mean, he he said it himself in the interview after winning their last best of five. People thought he was out. People thought he was a bad player, but he is still a good player. He is still a guy who can win trophies, and he's just made history. Yeah, I mean, his third finals appearance, he was also the one of the first people to make two finals in a row with Gambit all the way back then. So this guy's already made history, and he's doing it again. First to win two. We've been hunting for that for so long. Yeah, I would say he undersold himself in the interview saying oh, he didn't have a great sure. series. I think he forgot the first two maps where uh, so much of it was about him and Leo being the carries for the squad to set them out on the right foot. I mean, it's just that that humbleness coming through, not looking to say, you know, <laughs> I'm the one who dominated, but he was so instrumental to the victory here. But I mean, what a just completely and utterly wild map. I mean, compare the stats from where Durka was at the half, you know, versus Aspas. Sure, he still finishes a little bit lower as far as kills are concerned, but he overtook an ACS in those first kills. Durka absolutely leveled up after that 3 9 half. And he was one of the guys who was a reason for why that 3 9 half happened in the first place. Yes. Actually. It was sloppy for him. For the King of Icebox to have that sort of performance in the first one, that was shocking to us. But then he comes out and they regroup. Are you kidding me? How do they have the composure to regroup like that? That's, That's ridiculous. I mean, this is incredible, too. You, you saw that one woman in the crowd. She came all the way out from Europe to root for these teams and gets <laughs> to witness an EMEA team winning here in Brazil. It's wild. But, I mean, for the this team absolutely incredible and I, I feel like we have to talk about like who do you even assign the MVP of the series for me I probably have to lean towards Leo he's had an incredible tournament he's had an incredible series but everyone from F Fnatic was really stepping up in that last moment hold up Ooh. hold up before we talk about the MVP we put a poll up asking the audience to vote for the grand final MVP and Twitter has spoken the honor goes to none other than Leo Okay, I mean, this isn't shocking given his performance in those initial couple maps, but for me, by the end, I would have to go with Boaster, and I'm happy to see that he's at least the second highest option. Being able to get the team to rally back after that 3 9 half and then lead them to a nine consecutive round streak, for me, it's all about him. I see the argument. You're looking for the person who sparked the comeback, right? Yeah. And I get it for Leo as well. I completely agree. I think Leo had a stellar performance, but if you're looking for that guy who sparked the comeback, I look at Alpha Year. Mm. This sure. guy, yeah. sure, he didn't have the most electric series, but if you look at him on the stage, this is one of the few guys who is constantly stepping up, constantly saying, we got this, we got this, over and over and over. And the reason why we all have a different take on this discussion is because this is truly a super team. Every one of these players showed up, performed on this international stage, and for Leo to pull back from the tournament as a whole, I think he really was making history here, ma putting up one of the absolute best individual performances that we've seen from an initiator player. Yeah, take a look at that. Only Eclipse by his current teammate in Chronicle by yeah. two ACS. But what a performance this kid has had. Yeah. Such a youngster displaying everything that he has in his arsenal here on the lock-in stage. Yeah, I mean, we were expecting, waiting, hoping that Leo would end up on a championship caliber team because we've known for a while how good this guy is. But it's been hidden. And we've seen it all the entire time before this, right? His shock darts are insane. His utility is insane. His discipline is insane. And he just had an all-time insane performance as well. Yeah. I was just flawless in those first couple maps. I mean, the utility usage, the way that he was just piloting those rounds was just gorgeous. So, I mean, still well-deserved. Marathon of a day, an incredible tournament. <laughs> Final Remember we had a show match today? <laughs> There's we a new agent. Yeah, that again, <laughs> felt like two years ago. Final thoughts down the desk, though, as we conclude the first international tournament here in 2023. Remember, this is just the beginning. I think the, the biggest thing for me is that single elimination is so incredibly fun. We had... Every single team here from each of the international leagues, two Chinese teams, and being able to run this gauntlet for Fnatic and yeah. win out all of out of through of all that single elimination against all odds, not losing any upset, it's incredible. It was 31 matches total, right? Ooh, 31 wow. matches, and we got not only a Brazilian team in the finals, we got an insane series with Fnatic, who was the team heralded, the super team, the only super team they needed to lift a trophy this year. They did it right off the bat in 31 matches overall for the tournament. You couldn't write a better story than this in front of the Brazilian crowd. I mean, two of the, the best of five matches going all the way to five maps as well, both attempts at reverse sweeps. It was just so incredibly hyped this whole way through.
I, for one, I'm, I'm excited that this is just the beginning. We've got the regional leagues getting ready to kick off pretty damn soon, and then Tokyo is on the horizon, and I just can't wait to see what the, the landscape looks like, who's going to be on top of each single region when we get to that event later. Well, there you have it, friends. That is going to do it for us here. Once again, congratulations to Fnatic for winning the first ever lock-in and making this such a historic event. It's a heck of a way to start off the 2023 VCT season. A big thank you to everyone here in Sao Paulo as well for welcoming us and making this such an incredible experience. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and be good to each other. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, Valorant is back, and we are kicking off the year with a bang. 32 teams will debut on the world stage and make their first steps towards a champion's run. This is single elimination, do or die, and only one team can make a perfect run. Lock-in starts right here, right now. Let's go, baby! particular point of pride seeing our friend Potter take the stage and do the fist bump. That was pretty cool. Anything can happen in this format. You can get upset, and if that happens, you're going home. Rez comes in, do they get a punish? Huge! From Sob! Giving NRG the finest amount of hope. What a game. A bloody missed Valorant. We might be in for, dare I say, some hair-raising performances. What is that? An absolute banger alert. Just sound the alarms. Reset of the aim zest. Absolute demonic performance. NRG sending Koi home on day one here in Sao Paulo. And it was a valiant effort from BBL. Make no mistake about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is me in my hotel wow. room in the morning. We have a new segment. What were they cooking? Bonjour and merci beaucoup for having me on the show. Yeah, it's going to be a shutdown. Lovely. Come on, Corp. My work. Oh, a heartbreak for FBX, who, in my eyes, exceeded expectations. It is going to be the Rez instead, but he's going to go swing it off. What is that from Zappa? He just eliminates everyone. C9 have destroyed Paper X. Instead, the entree, I think I'm going to go hang out with Giants and have some Burger King instead. Oh, no, that is not thing. acceptable. Uh uh. Virginia, though, Nuki backing him up, and now it's down to Ardis. Baiting the angle once more, and it's found the fight. Nuki takes it. We got to win it, OT? All right, fine. Have it your way. Come on, boys. Hey, step up, boys. Every round is a joy. It's so fun. And he's caught another one. Oh, 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 oh. I need a replay of that immediately. EG has done it. And Team Heretics are going home. MIBR sent home. Gen G, man. That is heartbreak. But to you, what? <laughs> you can't be pulling that out, Victor. Not again. But he rips it around. Someone check his PC. He's got a horseshoe stuck up his ass. Yes. <laughs> The Cloud9 Colossus has crumbled! EG denied it, another comeback completed. We'll call this round done, because Tui's has got three. Guys. Loud! The crowd is on their feet! The Brazilian hope is still alive! I thought that the hair was going to raise on the top of my arm, but it ended up growing on my head. It's a miracle! Tom has hair! Buzz does so well to get two! Oh. And he'll even snipe Garnets out of the sky! The Korean Conquerors no. come out once again and take themselves that 2-1 victory. DRX are going all the way. We saw the Alpha Bracket deliver last week, but this week it's all about the Omega Bracket. If this doesn't get the blood pumping, you might need to check your pulse because you could be dead. This is what it's all about, baby. Oh, Jesse Bash, okay. you cannot so do so this so to so the so man. So Unbelievable. Ash Eddie trying to dash around the utility in. He can't find much. He gets two shots are clean. I don't know, guys. It was too easy. And Liquid evaporating under the pressure. The European hope finally shows up and take down crew very quickly. Who is that? This is kind of a vibe, though. Hold <laughs> up. Yo, shoo. You guys are looking handsome up there. You are so sexy, guys. And again, once more, King just back and forth around Generator, and that will seal the deal. And Zeta Division have been sent home. What's going on right here? Acting in, sees into the back, double swings there. It's beautiful, and the Seas catches on to two, just lined up. Yes! Vitality safe hands for them. They have sent Global Esports home. And RRQ are left brokenhearted. Now Cryo pushing forward, they've got him pinched, they've got him slimy, they've got him suffocated, and they've got him done. 100 Thieves avoid disaster, they take down EDG. I didn't know I could have this much fun watching Icebox. <laughs> Alarm by triggered. Ben has to turn back, but DG's in from backside. He's able to clear him out. He gets four. Fury a takedown T1. And a 
good buyout from Secret, who won over our hearts for a while. I wasn't listening. You've ruined my bracket. It's, no, this is my bracket. It's Bracketology with Brent, okay? The Bracketologist. Mosey picks up two, but there's King. If he taps the spike, let's see if he can dodge it. He just takes the fight, and King wins it out! Vitality fall! Foot just didn't quite have it there in that final map in the final half. I think Valorant will be the winner today. This crowd is going wild, and there hasn't even been a single bullet shot so far, man! Most are playing up close. Do there's you expect him here? Do you expect him here? No! DJ then off falls, and Booster gets another! Booster gets three! Fnatic beat the crowd! They beat Furia, and they advance! They've just made a lot of people mad. <laughs> gonna be hopping and skipping, doing a little dance. Winner dance, guys. Winner dance. It's up to Sagetsu. 1v3 for Shabout. 1, 2, 3! So one tops, one tops, one tops. Navi look like an unstoppable force right now. Finally, they get back to the pool, but it's a 2v2. Darka gets it down. He's already got the shot. He's a hard alpha. Find Dustin. Bang! Lead in! Oh! <laughs> That's how it ends. The comeback is crushed. Fnatic move forward, and there is no tomorrow for 100 Thieves. The Alpha Bracket started off with 16 of the world's best teams, and now we're down to our final two. Someone goes down today, Achilleos. They do. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be loud. Smokes off one of the angles, but a crossfire is too potent, too powerful, and it is just that hammer strike one after another. Surely LB's got the clutch. Yeah, he hears the timing for it, too. Yeah. Done yet. Amaka will not be denied that fifth map. Letting loose, drop to his knees. Reposition is not there. And now have done it. And it's such a bitter feeling for DRX once more reliving the nightmares, reliving the history books. They will be exiting much sooner than they hoped. We started with 32 teams, and after today, we will be down to only two. Fnatic on one side, Na'Vi on the other. Only one gets to make the trip to the finals tomorrow to challenge Loud for that international title. The flash, the dark. He's in the cubby, though. He's in the cubby, and he's patient. Oh, oh dear. Oh, that's okay. They saved the day. They saved the round. That could have been disaster. Let's get freaky. <laughs> Chronicle with two massive ones. He drops down, and he gets the third. Nice. Most are immediately up on his feet. Asking the crowd to start thinking about sending Navi home. Ciao. No crash, bro. Come on. Bro, I'm trying. What do Navi do here? Actually, that's the thing about this Fnatic roster right now, man, is that you think, all right, how do Navi respond? Fnatic don't even give him a chance to consider the approach. Valorant has shown us that many aspire, but few attain. And the pursuit of greatness persists for Fnatic. Navi, they looked like the best team in the tournament. But Fnatic say, hell no. We're about to reveal a brand new agent. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Gecko. I got Doug. <laughs> I got the, the guest casters here. I got, I got Bala. How you guys doing, man? Good, man. I'm glad we're your guests. Thank you for inviting yeah, us. Thank you for letting uh, us join you on this death. The best of the best, holy. <laughs> so now here, they're, they're protecting Wingman with a couple things. Smoke yeah. here. Dizzy to kind of protect the planet. Yeah. Here it is. He did it! <laughs> Let's go! Paul's got some room, though. Paul's got some room. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, there you go. That was so awesome. That was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was a warm-up. It was a good warm-up. It was an appetizer. Loud looking for the back-to-back. -back. Fnatic with a second chance. It all comes down to this. Three map wins stand between our teams and being crowned king here on the stage. No util in his hand. Down to two years. Has to stick it. It's the percentage play for the running gun forwards. Incredible stuff there from Leo from Chronicle. Fnatic off to a fantastic lead. Chronicle, this angle is so goddamn cheeky. Stumbling, crumbling, faltering. And that is just brutal. Second map claimed here in his grand finals. Alfie is there. Less strikes back. And will he get the fourth? Yes, indeed. Loud proving that they've still got what it takes to stand toe to toe. The greatest in the scene here in the grand finals. He's holding the ground. He's a stalwart defender. The repush. No more time. Backs away. And that's loud once more. Outstanding stuff for Loud to bring it all the way to be used to contain, has to be used to shut down, and it's all slam dunk. No 
Brace everywhere, the double swing! <laughs> Spray it down! Go! Let's go! And the fight is over! 14-12, denying the reverse sweep! Fnatic, they pull off the impossible! It's been 643 days since that loss to Sentinels. 68 matches, their fifth global LAN. And finally, Boaster and Durka can put their hands on a trophy. Reality, would you 